go from heartbroken to honeymoon happy in just 30 days? Is that even possible? It is when you understand the three pillared approach that is actually easy to do when you put your focus in the right place. I talked to Anna about this back from season one, episode 14 and 32 to tell of her journey from the pain of a failed marriage to a three year relationship with a damaged consumer who leaves her heartbroken time and time again, ghosted all manner of issues in that relationship to making a decision and in 30 days finding her one, getting engaged and getting married in just 11 months time. It is possible. On this episode, we go into the process. We outline it very well and I don't want to delay. So let's get right to this episode with Anna. I'm so thankful for your advice. I love how intelligent and eloquent you are and still have love. You've given me some great guidance and direction, and now it's up to me to execute it. I feel a lot better just working through it. I thank you so, so much. I feel like you already are instilling more confidence in me that this is possible. Sick of sacrificing or settling in your romantic life? Welcome to Make Him Wonder with Coach Paula Grooms where women struggling in real relationships ask the expert. Unscripted, unfiltered, understandable coaching conversations to help passionate women succeed in love. Hi there, and welcome to Make Him Wonder. I'm your host, Coach Paula, a dating and relationship coach, licensed social worker, and author of the book, Why Will He Commit? How a Man Decides to Make You the One. Today, I'm very happy to have back from season one, episode 14 and 32, 45-year-old Anna. Anna comes back on Make Him Wonder to update us on the most recent happenings in her romantic life. You might recall Anna first came to us as a recently divorced mom after 18 years of marriage. Anna's episodes had listeners commenting that her situation was, quote, heartbreaking. Upon hearing this, from episode 14. Yes, it just feels like I'm going to go back to having the same marriage. I might as well stay married with him. It just feels like it's going to be just providing and sex. And that's that's what I had, providing and sex. Many divorced women in Anna's situation could relate to how Anna was feeling, especially as Anna found herself in a very difficult relationship with 52-year-old Dan, who time after time disappointed Anna and even periodically ghosted her. Anna and I worked together on attempting to make the best of things with Dan because of a situation that precluded her from going online and having any possibility of meeting out socially other men for possibilities. For privacy reasons, I won't disclose what those parameters were, but they were of significant hindrance. But Anna rose above her circumstances using the manifesting methods that I recommend and coach on in my programs, as well as focusing on what she needed to do to move her life forward. In less than a month's time, Anna had manifested 50-year-old Luke, and I'm so happy to report that in just 11 months, Anna and Luke are now married, and she feels she truly has the love, connection, and romance she has always wanted. I can't tell you how happy I am to have her on today to share her wonderful story. So welcome, Anna. Hi, Paula. Great to be here. It's just such a wonderful story. And if you can tell us a little bit about first, how happy you are now and what the difference is between your life pre-Luke and post-Luke. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's uh, an amazing difference, really. I feel connected. I feel loved. I feel like I have a life partner that I can uh, truly share my life with and experience. Uh, Mostly, I found someone that I can be myself with and that uh, we're very compatible. And uh, I feel like this whole process has been worthwhile just to find him and to have this relationship. I'm so happy that you say you feel it was worthwhile because I remember the hard times when we were working together that you were struggling to make things work with Dan because of the limited ability to meet eligible men. Do you 
ever look back on those times and and take stock of how far you have come? I do. I think that on the one hand, personally, I have grown so much through that experience. And even though it was so incredibly painful at the time, I realize now that only after experiencing the challenges and who I was in that relationship was I able to determine what I really wanted in this new one and what I was willing to accept and not accept in my relationship with a new man. And and it's been the case with Luke and it made everything very clear. On the other hand, I remember you telling me, you know, if you could have a if, a crystal ball and say, if, if you knew that this would be over and eventually you would have someone by your side, how would you feel? And, and every time I had that thought at the time, it just helped me through it. But if only we could share that wisdom with other women, because at the time, it does feel very helpless and painful and like there's no way out. And I certainly felt that for many years during my divorce. I'm so glad you can encapsulate it like that. It was very difficult. I would describe Dan, for those who have read my book, they'll get this. I call it a damaged consumer. Would you agree with that? Absolutely. That would be the way I would describe him, too. And damaged consumers can be very compelling because they typically have a lot of good in them, and that's what you saw. And I remember Dan was saying throughout giving you such mixed signals of wanting everything that you wanted and wanting to move forward with marriage and true commitment. I can only imagine how terribly lonely and confused you must have felt at times. Yes, absolutely. Um, there were What was difficult was that what he said certainly didn't coincide with what he did. He would lift my hopes up and express a lot of love and even the, the desire to move forward in our relationship and to be together. And then he would simply not show up when it was an important moment or follow through with our plans. And time and time again, I would believe him because I thought he, he really means it and he's changed. But it was time and time again that I would end up feeling, because he couldn't face things also, there was very poor communication. So he, his, his way of, of answering or showing things was simply to disappear or not say anything. So that was one of the most painful things. And I remember thinking, I, I really need a, a, a relationship where there is communication and reliability. I remember one incident, and I believe... You had broken things off when you came back on episode 32 in season one, and this was one of the times you just had to do that. He disappointed you and ghosted after agreeing to come to a family event, and you were left kind of with egg on your face, and it was very, very painful, and you broke it off. Here's a clip from that that listeners might remember. It was uh, two and a half days later, he texted something like, uh, I'm not feeling well, I was in bed last night, but he never mentioned the get-together, never mentioned what happened the day he didn't show up, which is Saturday. So he mentioned that on Sunday he was in bed and that he was feeling sick. And that was, let's say, on Monday. And then I didn't hear, and I said, well, thank you for responding. He did, I didn't hear from him again for another two and a half days, and he wrote, uh, I'm feeling much better. How are you doing? So no apology ever? Not, not even an acknowledgement of what had happened. Not wow. much less an apology. Yes. Wow. And he knows that okay. I wrote, you know, I'm, I'm concerned. Um, and I was not angry in my, in my, in my text. I was expressing si significant concern mm -hmm. over his well-being mm -hmm. and nothing. So I don't exactly remember when that was, Anna, in the trajectory of your relationship, but I believe you got back together after that. Do you remember how? After um, a few months, um, he reached out again. After a few weeks, actually, it was like four or five weeks, he reached out again, and he just started writing and writing. And then I remember that I 
asked to talk and see, you know, explain everything, what I really needed and wanted and what had gone wrong and what would be the only way we would get back. And we got together after that, but it really didn't work out. He didn't have the capacity to follow through, it seems, and it wasn't a lack of love, which made it so confusing. I'm glad you pointed that out because that's what I have found throughout my work with clients. The one constant, it, it typically isn't about lack of love, it's about capacity to be in a real relationship or one or two things that need to be tweaked. So it's all on a scale. He was very high on the scale and he lacked the capability. Do you remember some of our coaching sessions where we would discuss that? Yes, I do. I remember clearly. And at the time, because it's always useful for me to understand, I believed that he lacked the capability, the capacity, relationship skills. On such a high level, he lacked relationship skills. Yeah. How was that for you? How did you process it? Because you did, and you did all the work, and you are a high-level mechanic of men. I can say that for sure. Yeah, I felt, on the one hand, very frustrated with uh, the universe, I think, because I thought, well, this man is worthy of love, and I remember talking about that with you, but I can't really connect with him at that level. And then I was also frustrated with myself because I thought... I have to find a way to fix it. And I think that must be coming back to something in my, in my childhood. But I was wanting to figure out a way that if only I changed this or changed that or did this or did that, then he would be able to meet me where I needed to, to be in the relationship. Like he would show up or he would be able to make the decision or he would be able to follow through with things we agreed on. And this is like including trips and family events agreements on on meeting our family etc oh my gosh you're taking me back i remember so many times from the smallest things to really big things he would just drop the ball and let you down we mechanicked it you did everything you possibly could and i think it's a universal generally speaking for women because we are the connectors the cooperators the caretakers of the world we see the good in the man we love, and that attempt to fix it is an instinctual need and desire and comes from a good place, wanting to heal. Yes, wanting to heal and wanting to be the healer and thinking, and this is something I think I've heard you say, thinking that love is enough in a relationship. And clearly love wasn't enough in this relationship. The only thing I regret is how long it took me to come to terms with it and make the decision to, to leave the relationship. Yes, I want to get to that because that, I think, came actually at the right time for you. Yes. Yeah, looking back, you can see that, right? Well, looking back, I can, but at the, you know, yes. So it just happened just in time. Like, I'm glad I didn't wait any longer, if that's what you mean because it made me available and open my heart and, and allowed me to look forward. Exactly. It was also you taking the reins and saying enough. And that was a little different because you, in my recollection, you had finally come to terms because I think you needed to give it that college try of attempting to heal a bit. And he just really showed no signs of it ever having any kind of lasting effect. Yes, that's true. And it was only until I was certain that I had done everything and that I didn't want this for myself. And it was also a process of growth because at the time I remember I started working with you on affirming newer things about myself also. So it was a personal growth that happened in parallel that one day I was finally just ready and strong enough. And it was like the decision was very clear and I was able to, to break it off. And do you think that it was everything with Dan and your ex-husband too, but culminating really in effect 
making you the person you became through the attempts. In other words, the attempts at the healing were needed, but it's not just what the effect was or was not on the particular man. It's what the effect was on you. Mm, absolutely. That, that's true. And I think I have to think more about it because that's very deep. But yes, the actual process itself transformed me and in a positive way at the end, um, because it's it, on the one hand, it's accepting what my role is as a woman and embracing it. But on the other, it's understanding what my limits are and how not to lose myself in the process. Huge, right? Yeah. Really huge. And when we get to that, we really get to freedom. And I believe it's that essence that allows a man to love to his fullest. Hmm. What do you mean by that? So because men love through wondering and longing and a bit of pursuit, it's a very subtle thing that when we get to that point of truly feeling like you feel, mm -hmm. in essence, it's loving ourselves more. Yeah. It doesn't mean we love them any less than we have, but it's a healthy love. Yeah. I think these two relationships and um, really help me understand that how important it is to love myself more and love myself first and how compelling that is to a man. It's the it factor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Without it, the man just, it's almost like it's a, it's like stuff in the universe, like gravity. We don't see it. But boy, is it there, big time. Mm -hmm. And it's Alex Hermosi says, the work works on you more than you work on it. Mm. Now, he's talking about that in terms of like a business context or something. But I think about it in terms of anything that is an endeavor, in a sense, in our lives. And women come to me, most typically, because they are endeavoring to make a relationship work or to get back with someone or to find that someone. And when we actually work on ourselves, that's when the magic happens. And so it's why I work under the three pillars that I do, the mechanics of men, of course, self-concept, mindfulness, and then manifesting. All three are important, but it's interesting to me that women come to me for the mechanics course part of it, but the secret sauce is under the other two pillars. That's so true, Paula, and I experienced it myself. Um, I thought I had a really good self-concept, but clearly I had a lot of work to do because of the previous relationship I had been in. And it wasn't until I, I think the mechanics of men, I caught on really quickly from you. And, but the other two were, was where the work really was. And combining also the two of the self-concept with the manifesting is very empowering because um, mechanics of men, there's, you know, there's just so much you can do. And then self-concept, you work on self-concept, but when you combine it with manifesting, it's like, okay, it, it's a vision of the future. And we feel we, we, we can have access to something, even if we can't control the circumstances. Yes, and the mechanics comes so much easier when the other two things are in place. The manifesting, living in the knowing that you're going to get what you want, and this high self-concept. I find an easy example of this is when a woman is highly anxious about a relationship, a man, doing the mechanics part of it, like, for example, not reaching out to him. That is so difficult. The feeling like, I remember hearing someone say, it's like, if I didn't do that, it's like I'm going to die. Mm, interesting. It's so profound because it's our subconscious programming that I'm being abandoned. When the man is not in my presence, when he is not texting me when he is not calling, I don't see him, whatever it is, the effect on the subconscious is so deep and like 
I'm losing that love forever. I'm being abandoned. Well, when that was programmed in the child from birth to age seven, actually the child did fear that she was going to die. Mm. Mm -hmm. Because everything we have, our entire being, we know from zero to seven as the human animal we are innately that if those two people, but particularly the mom, if she doesn't love us, we don't get fed, we die. Mm -hmm. and maybe that's why it's like even for women, even knowing in my case that this was not the right person for me, it was still so hard to leave because it was a sort that sort of dependence until I understood that I was lovable, but that he just, it was a capacity situation. But I can totally see that fear that is just based on an early childhood. Yes, and that's why that second component, the mindset switch for self-concept is truly significant. Well, it's that feeling and understanding how wonderful and lovable we are, regardless of what other people do or say, and that we can stand on our own. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very, very hard to do in the moment when the immediate circumstance is replicating the programming from early childhood. From early childhood. Okay. Interesting. But it's a must. It's a must. And, and perhaps because, as you said, the work works on us. That's probably the reason I feel I don't regret the process because it took me through so much that the growth, the, the work was a lot. So I can see what a different person I am from having experienced um, these relationships, especially the last one with your support and your coaching, because I was growing through it, not just enduring it. That's exactly it. You encapsulated it perfectly. That work working on us is the outcome that we want because to predicate our well-being on another giving us validation is beyond a slippery slope. It doesn't matter whether it's even a husband or not. It has to be there foundationally simply because of what we said earlier, which is it is the magnetism of that that keeps him in the relationship. Yes. Keeps him loving. So it's all together. And I'm so glad that you got to this point. And I want to talk about this other component, which is the manifesting, which was the cherry on top, or I would say the, the actual tipping point for you because you were ready, you did all that work, you got your self-concept to that level that was needed, you had taken a high-level mechanics course, and you were very good at that. That was never really an issue. Mm -hmm. But you did it, and then you did that last little bit, and it changed everything. I want you to know that I'm always excited by the success of my clients. Whether it's getting on track with a love, getting back with a love, or getting engaged and married. And I'm equally excited for season three of Make Him Wonder, because Make Him Wonder is now exclusive. A members only club where you can hear all episodes past, present, and future completely ad free. And membership has its benefits. Remastered, easier to listen to former episodes categorized by age and relationship status. Situations spanning the spectrum of dating and relationship issues like age differences, dating divorced, dealing with difficult discussions of sex, exclusivity, and commitment. All the latest conversations are available as a member as soon as I'm done coaching a guest on her unique situation with an exclusive video of my recording recollections, reflections, and recommendations for you when you're listening. You'll also get my Making Magic with Men Mindset Manual a weekly action step maintenance practice for you to stay in 80, 20, tip top and tuned up shape. Because you don't have to be perfect. If you do 80% of what it takes to have success with any man, the 20% you don't won't much matter. Whatever your romantic situation, this weekly mindset focus will render you ready with the right mindset 
and the right tools for anything you might be facing with your current or future Mr. Right. It alone is valued at over $500. Joining is easy. And as a woman, you have choices. Join monthly and unsubscribe anytime, or take advantage of either the six month or 12 month membership with their amazing discounts. Check it out at the 8020wonder.club. Do it now while you're listening, because there is no time like the present to start your new love story. Give yourself that gift so you can have the gift of love and commitment this year. And while you're doing that, we can get started. Tell us about that last month with Dan and just take us through what happened because it was really amazing with all the restrictions you had on you. And I'm going to be truthful that I wanted this so much for you. I remember us having a coaching conversation and saying, listen, you are such a great manifester. You've manifested so many amazing things in other areas of your life because you didn't have any limiting beliefs in those other areas. But this one was a challenge for you. But we said, let's just, you know, go balls to the wall with this. Do outright how you manifest things. And it was only a month's time. It was. It was amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So th that last month, I remember the feeling of release finally when I made that final decision and I knew I was going to be strong enough and I was going to be okay um, and letting go. But it was having had developed the confidence in the manifesting also and um, just being ready and, and letting go of the time of when it was going to happen because that was a big one for me. I It, it was like a switch. Uh, after going through so much with Dan, I was able to just let it go and be really strong and be really calm, if that's what you're asking about that last month and that last decision. Well, tell me about the last couple of months with him and what finally was the last straw for you. Was it slow? Was it, I, I can't really remember. Yeah, I can't either because it's a blur now. But the last blow was, okay, I'm going to give him one last chance to show up for something. And he didn't. And I just decided, okay, this is, this is it. And it's going to be over. But I didn't even break it off because there was no need. He didn't show up. So it was a slow process. We were going to go on a trip together. And I was already feeling a difference in myself. Like mm -hmm. I knew what was acceptable and what my expectations were. And I was not going to lower my expectations or concede or anything. And so I had decided that he either showed up this way or this was not going to work. Um, and so I, I, I thought it would be easier if we did something very tangible like this, okay, for me and for him. And we were going to go on a trip together, and at the very last minute, he just wouldn't confirm. And he wouldn't confirm, and he wouldn't confirm. So I set my own deadline, and when he didn't confirm by that deadline, I decided, okay, this, this person is not showing up for me, is not falling through, and I'm no longer going to be with him. But he was a very passive, uh, his way of communicating was very passive. So he would withdraw, he was silent. So for me, I was broken up. And so when he finally came back, I, I just told him, you know, it's over. The calm I felt inside and the clarity was so dramatic compared to previous times where I was so confused and so hurt. I was, okay, this is over. And I remember speaking with you and feeling in a completely different different place with this final event and my decision. I was clear, confident, and just over, over it. I now remember, too, the difference in talking to you at that time, how you were so much more at peace. And it's just like it all culminated at once. And I think that's when, tell me your recollection of it, but I think it's when we said, okay, this is good. We're at a new point now. You are such a great manifester. Let's only focus on what you want. Let's put that behind us. What do you want? Let's focus there. Yeah. So the way I normally manifest is through writing. And so I took a I know I decided, yes, I agree with you. This is something that I, I want in the past, and I just want to focus on the future. And, um, and I was also very clear 
about not wanting to settle and there was because of my change in my own self and the sort of ignoring circumstances around me through this process of, uh, of manifesting I wrote down absolutely everything I wanted in a relationship and in a man and I put it away and then I just focused on being happy and being myself and you know my day-to-day my work my friends my life trying to focus on everything that was good and not thinking about it again and then I went on a business trip and I met my current husband during that trip it was about five weeks later I remember just amazing this is the law of assumption manifesting way you plant a seed which was for you the activity of writing it down and I would assume when you did you were in a different state in other words it wasn't a state of lack Mm -mm. it was in a state of excitement Mm. of eagerness that and sort of like expectation of when it was like oh I can't wait to for it to happen but you know just a few months before I was like will this ever happen could this mm-hmm. how could this happen could this happen yeah mm-hmm. and I remember my own experience then was that I had a lot of trust in that for you mm. because we had worked together for quite a while and I knew your ability to manifest mm-hmm. in another area <laughs> right but I have to tell you I still had that little, little doubt. Mm -hmm. I didn't express to you, of course, because it was so small, (laughs) (laughs) right? I'm glad you didn't, yeah. Well, the reason I didn't was not withholding it from you, but because I'm very honest in my work, I think you know that. Mm -hmm. But because it was so small, it was not even like a conscious thing for me in a sense. Like it was really, really small. Mm-hmm. And I truly believed that this was the way that you were going to overcome the obstacles that we alluded to in your introduction. Mm-hmm. Yes, of living in a culture that is so limiting for women who are divorced. Right. Very few opportunities, and it's just very isolating. Right. Right. So you overcame those with that and that's really what I want everyone to take away today is that you're such a great example of this because if you could overcome those circumstances I want to say to all all my clients and all women like my goodness you have online dating opportunities you are out socially you're not restricted in going out by yourself etc etc there's no limitation here yes absolutely I remember being on the calls um, with you and thinking wow if only I could be on on online or if only I could go out like the way you know other women can and so I had to overcome that fear that how on earth was this gonna happen but regardless of the challenges it, it was possible Mm -hmm. And I'm always struck by the fact that this isn't you saying, okay, with Luke, I don't have many other opportunities, so I'm going to accept this. He really is. He is. Everything you wanted. Yes, he really is everything I've ever wanted and beyond. I didn't even know that I could experience this much happiness, this much freedom, this much love, connection, friendship, fun, compatibility. It, there, there's nothing that I'm, you know, giving up on or, or settling on to be with him. It's amazing. It's just such a great example. It's why I wanted to have you on today because you made this happen in a way that it's not about action it's really accepting that the universe is abundant that we are so powerful and that when you make a choice towards the positive and again this wasn't easy you did all of the work but it's like that story of I think it's called fields of diamonds and there's another one about the man who was six feet away from his vein of gold in his gold mine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. So if you do not 
give up and you stay with the knowing, that's a, a nuanced thing that's hard to impart on folks who have never lived in a positive state. Most of us, to one degree or another, grow up with a certain amount of a fear-based mm -hmm. or lack-based family. And that is, you know, protection. Mm, that's interesting. Yeah. I mean, everybody wants to protect their children from what they believe are the possibilities, not possibilities, life's hardship, whatever. Mm -hmm. And all of those fears are imparted to us either through word, deed, action, uh, very subtly. So as adults, if we want to live our best lives, we have to overcome that and override the programming we've had. Love that. Override the programming. That is so true. Because I was going to say, you know, I, it, it's almost being, first you have to be aware of the programming. I was not aware that there was this running programming until I started working with you. And then overriding it was necessary before I could even start manifesting because we assume what's playing in the, in the background mm -hmm. without meaning to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that's what's happening to me in this, especially in relationship. Awareness is always first, right? Mm. We can't do anything to change anything if we're not aware of it. And then when, when, we, we, when we find that abundance, there's no limits. Because I remember writing down everything I wanted in a, in a partner and truly finding it. I didn't have, I didn't hold myself back. I didn't feel like I had to. And I also wrote who I was in that relationship. Hmm. I was showing up and how, because it, it still takes two. You can find the person, but then you have to keep them. <laughs> and we have to be in a very positive relationship for the rest. That's what I wanted. I wanted the relationship, not just the person. Right. And that's where the mechanics comes in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you did it. And like Steve Jobs says, you can only connect the dots looking backward. Now you can connect those dots. And I think journeys like yours are so profound because they give everyone not just the hope but the knowledge that it's possible yeah uh, these stories that that knowledge i hope will give will help women move forward with decisions they need to make or listeners even when the po even when the probability is low there is always possibility so Les Brown used to say, if anyone ever in history has done, any human, what you are hoping to do, then it's possible. Mm -hmm. And interestingly enough, he had a lecture on this. I think it's the four minute mile. So prior to a particular year, and I can't remember what the year was, it was thought to be impossible for a human to ever run a four minute mile. Mm -hmm. And whatever year it was, someone did it. And since then, all manner of people have done it. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Simply because there's no limiting belief about it now. Well, I hope that will help because I'm so glad you're mentioning the circumstances that I was facing and that I continue, you know, any woman in my culture will continue to face. So if it's possible in this, in these circumstances, it really is possible anywhere. Um, and maybe it'll give hope to women in my culture someday too. Absolutely. And it should give women who do not have those restrictions even more of a little like kick in the butt, so to speak, which is very useful. Mm -hmm. Because if you can do it under those circumstances, there is no limit for anyone who doesn't have those restrictions. So I thank you so much for doing this today. I am so happy for you. Thank you so much. I want to thank you because you offered me so much support throughout the process. And I feel like I've grown so much. And I think that these podcasts, really help other women. I've listened to yours in the past, and so I'm very happy to be here. Thank you again, and the best to you and your new hubby. I want you to have a wonderful life. I know you are doing the sexy mother stuff you need to do to keep that alive, healthy, and happy. Mm -hmm. I am working mm -hmm. on it. <laughs> 
yes, it's always a process for sure. No question. It's a continuation of it's knowing how valuable relationships are. He is going to now be able to grow to his fullest potential because he has you in his life. That feels really good. Yeah, I hope you know that. Oh, nice to be reminded of that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Be well, be happy. I know we'll speak from time to time about it and that you'll keep us posted with anything else. And thank you again. Thank you so much. Thanks. So glad that Anna was able to come on and do this episode today. If you are losing hope, struggling, you are so close and you cannot give up. The work works on you more than you work on it. However, if you are not working on it or the degree you are working on it is very small, well, then you are going to get the results equivalent to the effort. I believe it's why my coaching works so well because it is future oriented. I have very in-depth conversations with my clients. And there are times when I must say, we need to stop talking about the story right now. Because every time we talk about anything, we are reinforcing that thing. And it's why manifesting works. Dr. Tara Swart, who is a neurologist, she also has some other advanced degree. I apologize. I don't exactly have her title. But she outlines exactly how it works neurologically for us. The mind is so fascinating and we, I believe, are just at the precipice of finding out all that it is capable of. Because heretofore in the world, we have been limited to focusing on our survival. Now, to a great degree, in most parts of the world, we are able to focus on other things in a huge way. And we are getting the exponential results from that. And we are seeing that. When we focus on what we want, we neurologically set our brain to that, for lack of a better word, and some people use this in law of attraction, frequency. Everything in the world has a frequency. Thoughts have frequencies. So if that rings true for you, then you can think about it that way. That when you put your brain on that frequency, and it doesn't matter that the thoughts are imposed, meaning they don't just come to you naturally. We as humans tend to think we feel something, and then we do something from that feeling, and that produces some kind of outcome or not. Well, to some degree, that is true. But you see, if our minds are left to their own devices, meaning our consciousness is left to its own device, it will run all over the place. And we have to harness the power of it. The harnessing is actually putting in thoughts that we want to have rather than just feeling something and getting thoughts from that or vice versa, but not being directed in those thoughts. Thoughts can create feelings just as feelings create thoughts. This is why Anna has gotten the results that she has wanted. The combination of the three pillars. Yes, the manifesting was one third of it. Then we have the self-concept work that you cannot have urgency about. You have to have awareness, first of all, and then you must do something. Do what is needed to put the right thoughts into your subconscious so that you override the programming that is there. You can't change the programming. You can't take it out. It's there, but you absolutely can override it. And as you do it and you become new, it gets easier and easier to do so. You actually become new. Anna did this through the work that we have done for the last three years through, like we talked about, exceedingly difficult circumstances. But anyone who follows the law of assumption knows circumstances do not matter. It's how we handle the circumstances and focus on what we want, not what we don't. None of this is easy. Whatever is worthwhile in life is challenging. If it's not, we don't appreciate it much. It's why the term poor little rich girl, because many times when things come too easily, we don't value them. Relationships are incredibly valuable. 
it's truly the thing in life that makes it worth living, no question. So it is worth doing the work, investing in the work and yourself. There's no greater investment because you are all you have. You are going to go with you wherever you go. <laughs> and you are the creator of your world, your life, your relationships. I trust this was helpful for you today to give you so much hope to know that everything that you want is possible. And we always start any man in your life for that possibility possibility, you know you want to make him wonder. I trust you got a lot of great information and gained valuable insight from this real coaching conversation that you can use to help you in your romantic life. It's why this podcast exists and why there are several episodes that I choose to bring to you in their entirety, like this one. But you may not know that 98% of Make Him Wonder episodes are only partially available on YouTube and podcast listening platforms. And because I don't want you to miss out on getting the results you desire, I invite you to check out the 8020 Wonder Club, an exclusive membership-only club of the Make Him Wonder podcast, where you get each episode in its entirety ad-free. Over 150 episodes with a real woman coming to me with a real life love situation like you just heard, all categorized by age and relationship status. So you can choose episodes that pertain to your unique situation, categories of 20s, 30s, 40s, and 50s, getting an ex back, situationships, dating divorced, older women, younger men, and so much more. Plus, all new episodes the moment they're formatted and ready to be aired. No waiting for partial episodes to drop or your podcast listening platform. The 8020 Wonder Club also includes my Making Magic with Men Mindset Manual, a weekly video series of mindset and mechanics practices for you to do at your own pace each and every week. Join the club monthly and cancel at any time or save by committing to a 6 or 12 month membership. And not only will you save by committing to more, you'll receive a full coaching intensive experience where you'll be talking to me personally. You choose the date anytime during your 12 months and I'll be answering all your questions on getting what you want with the man you want. Don't miss out on how to make your man wonder in the right way to have the results you desire and deserve. Go now to the 8020wonder.club. That's T H E 8020wonder.club. You and your love will be glad you did.